I'm gonna walk through how to find pages per session inside of GA4. Now the name of this metric has changed slightly and also the location and the definition has also had a minor change to it. So to start, you're not going to be able to see pages per session by default in most of the standard reports. So what we're gonna do is add the metric uh, and customize one of the reports. So when we go to our report interface, typically uh, one of the ones you could do this on is an acquisition and the traffic acquisition. I've adjusted a lot of my reports, so I just made this test report, which will be similar to what you'll see the first time you go into this report. So as I land here, we'll start to take a look at the default metric that Google gives us with this report. So we'll see we have user session, there's some new engagement metrics, but we don't actually have uh, pages per session. We have events per session, which will be different because that's factoring in every event. Uh, engaged sessions per user, which is using this new engaged session metric, and we do have uh, engagement time per session. So if you want uh, pages per session, what we need to do is actually customize this report. And you can customize any report in the same manner. Uh, on the top right, you'll see the customize report icon here. So we're gonna click into that. And this is one of the better features of GA4, the ability to actually customize any of the standard reports. So you can really tailor it to the metrics you care about. Uh, you're not stuck to just what Google gives you out of the box. And I typically recommend actually reworking these quite a bit, but we'll start with just this pages per session metric. Now, here we have dimensions and metrics. So we're gonna click into metrics, and this is gonna show us all of the metrics that are currently set up in the report. So we can delete any of these that we don't care about. We can also add new ones, which we're gonna look at in a second in the drop-down menu. And you can even reorder by dragging um, and swapping the metrics around like that. So what I usually recommend is having about the first six metrics or so being the ones you care about the most, because typically what you'll have to do is actually scroll to the right to see the rest of the metrics. So if you have something really important at the end here, it's gonna be a little more difficult and take a few more steps to actually slide over. So I like to have these first few metrics be the ones I always wanna see. That way I don't have to spend time uh, navigating this report. So when we go to add metric, what we're gonna see is pages per session doesn't exist anymore. In fact, I can't even find page views or if I try to type it differently. So it's been renamed to views. So if we look at here, so page views are now views. Now views, the main difference, let's add views. Let's also add views per session. You could also do views per user as well. Um, so let's apply this. This is gonna save the changes into this report. Um, actually, you know what, I'm gonna go back one screen. Let's also move, just for example purposes, let's move these metrics kind of towards the top. Let's apply that. And then I'm just gonna save, once this is applied to my report, I'm gonna save changes. You can either make a new report or to the current report. If it's something you always wanna see, see, I recommend changing the current report. That way you don't have to do it every time and adjust your interface. This report traffic acquisition will now be tailored to the way I just set it. So when we go back to this report, we'll start to see uh, page views now and then view, page views per session. Now the reason it's called views and not page views is due to app tracking and web pages are being combined. So most people uh, using J4, at least from a marketing standpoint for B2B and different industries, uh, they may not have an app, so you, you just have a website, so you don't have to worry about app screens being added. Um, so it's, this is the metric that we want, views per session. Now what's cool about GA4 also, if you're not sure the definition, if you hover over it like this, Google will give you the definition. So here we can see views now are essentially uh, page views, but we're also adding app screen views. So if you only have a data, uh, data stream for your website, then you don't have to worry about app metrics being included in here. So for you, that's, this metric is really gonna be page views. And then this metric here is gonna be page views per session. So it's just been renamed. And then we also, with a slight definition change with the app, which won't impact you if you don't actually have an app data source. So that's pretty much all you need to do. And again, you could add this metric to any report that you want. You can also add this metric directly in Looker Studio just by searching for views per session. If you start typing in page views per session um, and variations of that, that's where you're gonna have trouble finding it because it's not gonna show up. So really you just need to change it to views and then you'll have it. Now, I tend to actually like to use these new engagement metrics like engage session and engagement rate typically in these reports. So I'm usually uh, personally not going to add views per session um, into my standard GA4 reports but it is an option. 
I like that engagement rate and engaged sessions will factor in multiple engagement metrics. So if we look at this one, uh, how long they're staying on the page or do they do a conversion or do they view two pages? So it's kind of combining a few different metrics in one and then engagement rate will just be the percentage. So I tend to actually use these newer metrics than going back to like bounce rates and pages per session like we had in the last version of GA4. So I like the new metric, but if you're used to the, the other ones and you want that data or you need it for whatever reason, uh, this will be how you add it back to your reports and unlock it inside of GA4.